Hello everyone, and welcome back to Let's Play Gear City. Last time we introduced two cars into the market, and today we are going to work on our third, the sedan type car that we are currently developing a chassis for. Now, the chassis will take about seven more months to be developed, if I'm not mistaken. Yes, the beat will be designed in seven months and that should be all that we are currently doing other than selling cars yes seems like it seems like it so we will continue manufacturing uh, the two cars the red fox and francisca and try to earn a nice profit every month though the research will hit us like the angry fist of god and we might plummet uh, back into debt. Uh, two notes though that I wanted to uh, make sure I get over with uh, before I start playing is first of all the music seemed quite loud in the last few episodes I don't know why because the settings was uh, same for all the videos I guess just a different track played and made it sound much louder so I'm going to try to lower the volume for the music from now on to almost a minimum and second of all you guys uh, suggested that I name the cars check names and uh, then uh, use an alternative English in the name as well. So I'm gonna do that from now on. We'll always have a dual name. I am not sure I'm gonna try to use slash or quotation marks depending on how the game will let me. I'm, I never tried this before. I don't know if you can uh, have that in there, but I don't see a reason why not. Okay, with that said, we can try and play. So we have uh, quite a lot of cars in the reserve, but we are now doing fine. There's Berlin, we closed the office in Prague, and there's Vienna. Some of you suggested that I look into Amsterdam and Netherlands, and Amsterdam, Amsterdam and um, Brussels in Belgium. Both of these could be good for us. So that's Netherlands and Belgium, which is what I'm trying to say. No, I'm not that bad <laughs> in geography. Come on, guys. So. We have uh, Berlin, which is some 273, so actually, Amsterdam and Brussels is both quite better. Though their projected growth is slightly worse. So if we ever go for a destination, it might be these two. Though, uh, the only bad part is that the population here is quite small, maybe about half a million in each. Actually, it was almost 700,000 in Brussels, but still, uh, the cities are quite small. I was thinking more of something like Paris, which has almost 3 million inhabitants in this time period in, in the game. But, yeah, and that one is even poorer than Berlin. Although still a bit richer than Prague. Interesting. There aren't any other major cities nearby that I could consider. Hamburg doesn't even have a million. I quite checking, uh, tried checking Rome, but Rome is quite poor and doesn't have that much population, surprisingly. I always thought of Rome as a huge, humongous city, but obviously I'm mistaken. So, the next good step would be to ship off to UK, but, you know, and there's a sea and stuff and everything, so we're not going to do that. A big choice would be Istanbul. Oh, actually no, it doesn't have a... Istanbul had a rapid growth in the 20th century, so it kind of fingers... Per capita is awful though. Oh, <laughs> for, just for fun, let's check Moscow. And no, that's Minsk. Oh, there. Moscow should be... Wait, is it this? No, that's Wolf. Kiev. And is there no Moscow here? Okay, something tells me this is not right. Moscow should be somewhere here in this area but okay well the per capita isn't all that bad and has almost two million people interesting interesting indeed and last place i wanted to check was madrid yeah not even a million and about 179 per capita so there isn't much interesting there for us so what we need to do now is sell at least the same amount of cars that we produce 
which is not exactly what is happening here. We're still selling interesting amounts of cars, but I think that we came to the conclusion that Wait, where were the chars? The game gives you insane amounts of statistics to play with, which is quite important now and even more important when you're playing on hard. Mm, just FYI, I never was able to run a successful company on hard apart from one that I started either in London or uh, New York. But, on the other hand, I saw people did that, so it is definitely possible. But I'm just not at that skill level yet. So, hold on, uh, where is it? Compare, no, sales city. There has to be here somewhere. Model sales by city. Hmm, maybe reports? You could demand. Yes, okay, here it is. Sales very high, filled in Vienna and... Now, I'm kind of sad that I can see the other... This is a weird bug. At the end of turn report. Maybe that could help us. We will see. So, uh, let's go ahead and spend a turn looking at various staff and waiting for the game to give us profit. Okay, we're still in green numbers. That's good. Making some 6.6 thousand uh, in cash. And... Someone contracted our component, we get a new contract request and monthly profit, cool. So let's check the news, we will see if there's something new, no, economic recession. God damn it game, god damn it. But one thing that I wanted to show you which is really cool and I hope this is already here somewhere, wait no it's in this one. There's another magazine that you can check, which is the Gear or Gear City Monthly. I still don't, want to, I still want to call it the Gear City, but people have been referring to it as Gear City, so I guess I'm gonna uh, go with it. So this is a magazine that isn't worked on very heavily right now, but the editor in chief, uh, which I believe is the developer of the game, uh, promised many times that he will contract professional writers who will actually uh, work on this and make it more awesome than it is now, which I have no reason to doubt, because he always uh, fulfilled his promises as far as uh, up-to-date uh, information goes. So uh, this will be a huge thing in the final release. We can check vehicle reviews and we get uh, reviews for our cars. So we can read those now because um, they were reviewed and we can see what uh, people say about them. So about Francisca. Everyone always says uh, that everyone else is the greatest microcar made, but you always go against the grain. What about an octopus? Okay, stop laughing. Yes, we all know the doors fall off when you open them. So, what's the solution to setting the newest trend? Ever thought about the Praga? This month we take a look at the new Francisca. Is this the microcar you've been looking for? Find out. So, on the track, gives us uh, performance information and about uh, the general looks. I was giddy when I heard we were testing Praga Francisca. On the track this thing is fast. How fast? Notice that there are no pictures on this page. That fast. <laughs> this is uh, one of the fastest microcar I've ever been in. And impressive as that sounds, the 3 kilowatt 5 horsepower Wow, 1381.6 RPMs horsepower 26cc single engine is even more impressive. Pedal to the metal, this baby will do 49 kilometers per hour, which is 30 miles per hour easily. And in a straight line, we hit a not applicable 100 kilometers per hour. Yes, it's pre generated, but you know, it's fun to read it. And he's going to work on it. I think it's uh, pretty awesome as it is already. Uh, it doesn't drop spin, wait, um, if this doesn't drop your jaw, the 27, what is this, NM of torque will spin the earth in the op opposite direction. The baby can tow 100 kilos, which is amazing. Once in a blue moon, a vehicle comes around that river bows us on the track. Praga Francisca is that vehicle. The microcar sticks to the road like a race car. It has so much grip that it could probably run well at Monaco. The vehicle is amazing in the turns. We drove it until it ran out of gas. That's how great it is. Mommy, can I keep it, please? 
So on the insides, the interior of the Prago Francisca is nothing short of amazing. It is beyond words to say how perfect this vehicle is. Only the finest materials <laughs> in the greatest possible workmanship ever seen in this type of vehicle grace the Francisca interior. Yeah, well, that's a lie. <laughs> we designed the car. We know how shitty it is. But yeah, we, we spend a lot on the design. Uh, that's where we... Uh, get our rating for. I cannot do anything but recommend the Francisca for everyone. Praga really outdid themselves. The Praga Francisca gives you a sense of home away from home. With 99 liter of cargo, well that's kind of good. And pa passenger space, the Francisca feels like a second living room. Which was what Praga was probably thinking when they made this vehicle. Let's make a vehicle that people could live in. <laughs> well Praga thank you because after my wife threw me out, this is my new home. And let me tell you, it rocks. Spare no expense and perfection are known to be mottos of Praga, and they show this off on their Francisca. The build quality is no short of perfect amazing. Hats off to their hard work. And we can check uh, the Red Fox uh, rating as well. Several months ago I thought to myself, Praga should really make a Phaeton that is better than everyone else. Someone at Praga must of been reading my mind because I got my hands on the latest Red Fox 901 and have it a test spin. I hope it's not as bad as the 689, but the real question is how far behind does it lag to the everyone else? Hmm. I was giddy when we heard we were testing Praga Red Fox 1901 and this thing is fast. Um, wow, the Phaeton can go up to 56 km per hour. Uh, the engine is the same. Not applicable. We found that. Uh, okay, so it can as well tow 100 kilometers. And do you remember those teacups rides as a kid? Well, the Praga Red Fox 1901 is like that, but faster. With the this Phaeton can turn on a dime. She's that good. There was nothing we could throw at it to slow it down. Mommy, can I keep it? And in the inside, the strongest selling point of the Praga Red Fox 1901 is its excellent, exceptional sense of luxury. Break out the grey popon, because the Red Fox 1901 is filled with nice ties. And the seats are so nice, I never wanted to leave. In fact, I'm writing this while sitting in the Red Fox 1901 in terms of passenger and cargo space. Oh, 1901. In terms of the passenger and cargo space, Praga Red Fox has 71 liters. Could be considered quite adequate for its class. The seats are roomy enough for almost every person. It can store what you would expect, and there is still enough room left over to have a bunch of knickknacks. It's hard to see where Praga could improve this car. It's good, very good. Spare no expense of perfection are known to be models of Praga. Cool. So the only downside they're telling us about is the cargo space and the leg space. So we have to think about that when designing our uh, next Phaeton. Okay, I got a paper and a pencil here in front of me because, you know, that's how you should do it. Oh wait, there's more! Oh, I didn't know that it had more. Long term. Wow. So if there was one vehicle I believe would be able to hit 1 million miles easily, it would be the Praga Red Fox. The vehicle was designed for dependability in mind. When it came to fuel economy testing, we tried to see how far we could go in the Praga Red Fox 1901. Our goal was to run it out of fuel. We tried and we failed. Even when the Red Fox 1901 fuel gauge was below E, it kept going. We followed at this, we asked Praga engineers how this is possible. They showed us their uh, motor bunny fuel system, which just keeps going and going and going and going for an impressive 17. 37.84 kilometers per liter and 46.01 in the highway. Okay, so this was in the city. In one word, amazing. Some sense that Praga and Fox 1901 remind, reminds us of the protective parent, one that wraps you in damage proof force field that prevents all interaction with the outside world. While the Red Fox 1901 isn't that safe, it is still quite comfortable to know that nothing can hurt you. 
Okay, so safety was a good thing. Conclusion. I was happy with the time I spent in the Prague and Red Fox 1901. This car is truly magnificent. I think future generations will look back at this vehicle and think, I wish I owned one of these. It is absolutely one of the best Phaetons you can buy. An instant classic that others in the segment will be compared to. I wish I could spend more time with the Red Fox 1901, but it is time for them to take it away. I believe I might go and buy one myself. Okay, and okay, th these are different ones that we didn't uh, didn't see. Uh, let's check on the other information about the Francisca though, because we, we already read those. So, the Praga Francisca is easily one of the most dependable vehicles ever made. It's excellent to design, excellent to produce, and with just a little TLC will last forever and a decade. Are gas prices too high now? What will they be? like 10 years from now what about 50 years from now does it matter if you drive a praga francisca it doesn't the francisca only uses 48.74 oh 0. 0.7 kilometers and 47.3 in highway so i i believe these are exactly the same are they 47.84 and 46.1 okay so they aren't interesting uh obviously weight and body plays a difference which means it rarely needs refueling, and when it does, it is cheap. While the Praga Francisca is certainly impressive in terms of safety, it's not overly designed in this fashion in a way that would impede its enjoyment. Nevertheless, this vehicle is more than safe enough for even the most uptight and poor drivers among us. And conclusion, when you drive Praga Francisca, you will see other microcars on the road and think to yourself, why would anyone buy anything other than a Praga? Simple answer, they're stupid. Okay, awesome. So, our first two cars were very well received, which we can see on their sales. So now we can just go ahead and uh, let this game run for a bit and see what we'll do. By the way, uh, one thing that I haven't shown you before we move on, I should uh, mention this. You have a couple of things that you can um, use the phone for. There's human resources, union head, lobbyists and contractors. I haven't used these yet. Human resources... Oh! Actually, okay, so human resources are the ones that you can use to modify your research teams, factories, branches, but all of this we are doing elsewhere. Interesting. Oh, but you can you can change uh, their wages here. Cool. That is interesting. I'll have to think about that later on. I never really got into using that. I think everything is um, set to... Well, I want to explain that. Basically set to uh, automation. It's automated. Union head, um, there's nothing here. We'll see if we ever need that. Lobbies, though, are quite interesting. National Automotive Association. Good afternoon. I'd like to thank you for your support over the years. We were at the National Automotive Association. Oh, we here at the... Wow. I don't know why, but this text is hard for me to read. We here at the National Automotive Association have been making very good progress over the years at preventing government overreach into our business. Our current efforts have helped the industry grow to what it is today. However, we still need your help. Lobbying politicians is not an easy task. It requires large sums of money to help persuade politicians into making the right decisions. That is why we need your help. Please give your support to our causes by providing us funding to help you succeed. So we can uh, assign a budget here to lobbying and it will save us some money. I believe that it can save you money on taxes and it can also help you when you are building. It makes it so that the actual amount of uh, money you have to spend on building your factories is way lower. So I usually wouldn't do this so um, so early in the game, but I think that it might be a good choice to actually start 
spending some money here and see if it helps us a bit. So let's lock it now and spend about 500 bucks on lobbying. Contractors, okay, there are no contractors now. So we'll be spending some money on the lobbying and see if that saves us any money at this point or maybe in the long run. So let's uh, process another turn.